and we are going to talk about the dangote situation in nigeria thank you for joining us on this episode of diaspora lounge what does it mean what does it look like for us as nigerians did you expect that something like this would happen and what does it bring to mind without further ado let's just go in here we go aki is here great to have you aki nice to have you too uh thanks yeah. for having me Aki, please, what do you think about this? Because I think that a lot of people have have been taken by surprise that this kind of thing is happening, and even with Dan Gokte, because he, he, from what I know, I'm not really a political or economic person, but what I know is that he, there's an outcry that he's being strangulated and not being given the opportunity to do with the refinery what he's supposed to do with it. And people are surprised that this is happening to a man like Dangote. So, well, well uh, so you know, it's uh, it's an irony. What exact what is happening now is actually an irony. Uh, <laughs> Nigeria and its corrupt system has uh, happened to several Nigerians before. Uh, me being one of one of such people, so it's unfortunate and ironic that. Nigeria is happening to Dangote. Yeah. Uh, the truth about it, if I say that, some people say, oh, why are you so callous? Why are you so... I'm not saying it in a callous way, but I'm just saying it in a very realistic way. What do you mean? Uh, yeah. Nigeria is happening to Dangote. Just the mm -hmm. same way that's happened to several people, several businessmen, you know, several technocrats, several entrepreneurs who have invested their money into projects, into businesses, and then the government will come up with certain policies that will run those businesses down. Right. It's been going on, it's been going on for over 30, 40, well, over 50 years, since after the Civil War. You understand me? Nigeria has been divided in purpose. There's no unity. There has not been any unity of purpose. I can say maybe there was a bit of it before independence, a little after independence, but since after the coup and the war, there's been a lot of disunity of purpose in Nigeria. But the surprise here is that Dangote is a very powerful man who works in the corridors of power and he's he he rough shoulders with the who is who. In Nigeria and with his economic wealth and economic strength and also he, he's very influential people did not expect to hear this type of thing in fact people were thinking all along that it's him and them that are doing this to Nigeria with the crude oil situation and now people are shocked that how can he turn around and, and say that they are doing this to even him okay uh, <laughs> uh, you see um you are as powerful as a businessman in Nigeria. You are as powerful as the political elite and the powers that be allow you to be. Your power is restrained or released by them at their wings and caprices. Do you understand me? You can be powerful, you have a lot of money, you have a lot of connection. But when it seems that you are taking away their base. Do you understand me? Okay. Yeah. When mm. it seems like you are taking away their base. You are getting too powerful. Do you understand me? You are getting too powerful. When you are taking their source, do you know how many people have become billionaires on the back of Nigeria's crude oil? Importation, right? And, and crude oil on one hand, and the importation of petroleum crude oil. Mm -hmm. So, the refinery means one thing that a lot of that is going away so what was he thinking when he when he was going into it did he did he well, not realize this yeah he's a businessman so a businessman will always think of okay if i'm able to provide these services one i will make money and then i'll provide uh, a certain kind of security for the country but you see politicians Politicians will rather choose to milk a cow until it's dead, until that cow is dead, 
than buy another cow. You understand? Have the patience to go into the market and buy a fat cow, another fat cow, that they can continue to milk. They will focus on that sing single cow or series of cows and milk them to death to the point where the cow becomes malnourished and cannot produce anymore. And that's when they start looking for. Now, let me give you a very good example. What I said initially that it's ironic that Dangote is in this position because he actually, as a, as a businessman, has been a beneficiary of a, a corrupt Nigerian system. Yeah. Because the, for a lot of years, for decades, he has held monopoly in certain sectors of the Nigerian economy that should not be. Yeah. You know, because of his relationship, his father's relationship with the powers that be, and yeah. in, in some way, the, the political economic uh, uh, world of Nigeria. Yeah, that's actually a fact. That's that's a yeah. fact that so is undisputed. He has been a beneficiary yes. of the corrupt Nigeria system that tends to back one man instead of, you know, proliferating a sector for everyone to partake. Yeah. So he has been, so that's why now, what has happened to him is basically is that he is going into he has gone into areas that a lot of people have become billionaires on and a lot of people have invested a lot of money to become billionaires so it's now. almost like oh you want to eat you want yeah. to now take the food from my mouth okay See, want it for example well. import let's even forget food oil uh, you know food oil uh, export exports you know nigeria is uh top in the rankings of uh uh open countries you understand? You get what I'm saying? So, now, let's leave the crude oil side. Because that if he has a refinery does not mean that crude oil will not be sold to, to many buyers around the world. Mm -hmm. You understand? That they are doing business with. But the aspect which has crippled Nigeria over the last 20 years is the importation of petroleum products. Mm -hmm. that a lot of people have become billionaires in dollars because of that. Mm -hmm. But if, instead of us to, to, instead of the Nigerian government to resuscitate the alien uh, refineries and make them work and produce at a higher percentage, you understand, we are resorted to importing petroleum products from outside the country. And NNPC is in the forefront, because if you look at the protagonist or the antagonist of uh, Yes, of, uh, Dangote. Yeah. NLPC is one of them. Yes. You can imagine the statement by the uh, uh, managing director uh, of, uh, or group managing director of NLPC, Melek Yari. You can imagine the statement. Somebody who is supposed to be promoting and, uh, and uh, helping uh, a refinery in Nigeria that is supposed to help resolve the importation uh, problem. Is almost like antagonizing him. Why? Because there's a lot of money Melekeari and all his cohorts make from importation of petroleum products. NFPC is in the forefront of that. Either yeah. they are importing themselves or people are being licensed through them to import into the country. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, Dangote is going to take a lot of that away. And that's a lot of business. That's a lot of billions of dollars. So <laughs> obviously, they are not happy. But they've not been able to do much because, okay, Buhari was there. And Dangote had the backing of Buhari. Yes. Now, you know that the political terrain has changed. Yes. You understand me? A southerner is there. You understand me? And to a very large extent, a lot of people, who supported Tinubu, the current president, uh, belong to that class. One, they've been dealt a blow of, okay, pseudo subsidy removal, you know, which has dwindled their returns, you understand, on, on importation. Now, there's now almost a, if the, if the uh, refinery comes on stream, there's now almost a total eradication of their financial base or their financial resource. So obviously, it's all out of time. And don't also forget that they buy this product from refineries abroad. 
Yeah. And those ones also are going to lose a lot of business. Yes. Because Nigeria is a country of over 200 million people. Yes. And so... There's a lot of consumption. And through Nigeria, you understand me, a lot of West African, East African, uh, uh, Sub-Saharan countries get fed petroleum products. So Nigeria is a hub, a corruption hub. You understand? So there might, so there will also be external influences. Yes, there are also yes. external influences. But but you know what I find? Yeah. Putting pressure on Melekiari, not they don't even actually need to put pressure on him because he is also going. He and his court are going to lose a lot. Yes, yes, yes. You understand? Me? So now what is happening? But the genesis of all of this. Let me tell you where the genesis of all of this started. The genesis of all of this started when several companies were given uh, licenses to operate modular refineries several years ago under Jonathan and Wari was supposed to take it to the next level. What's the next level? Allocation of crude oil for those modular refineries to operate. If modular refineries were operating, the level of importation would have reduced. So if 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 Dangote came, Dangote was just going to be able to eradicate. But because they given the licenses over 10, 12 years ago, and crude oil was never allocated to any one of those modular refineries. So it's like Dangote is now the king. And all of that, let me tell you the truth. One of the reasons why crude was not allocated to those modular refineries, small, smaller mm -hmm. refineries. Was this very same was, reason? Was because of that motive. Mm -hmm. Because he was hobnobbing with, with Wari and his people. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So now, what happened to those businesses that were given licenses, that had contracts with companies abroad who were producing their uh, infrastructure and machines, you understand, to run the modular refineries. Some of them lost a lot of money. Some of them went bankrupt because they were they, they had everything in place. They were just waiting for the allocation of crude oil. Now, what has happened now, to, what happened to them is what is happening. What is happening to At that scale. Yes. Yes. That's what is happening. But I do not support it because no matter how long evil, corruption, are succeeded for Nigeria to move forward. Yeah. It has to stop. It has to stop. If they allowed him to build the refinery and and, and and invest a lot of money to the level that he is now ready to produce, they should let him produce. Because, Ooh. yes, you can then still go ahead and give the modular refinery school dollar allocation. Because you need some measure of competition, even though it's it's, a, it's an unequal competition. But right they now. don't want that. Even if they give the modular refinery. So you you can also say that maybe the people who were who were uh, this, uh, who were ruined by the lack of uh, 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 allocation of crude oil over the last 10, 12 years might also be in support of all that is happening to him. Yeah. But all of them are involved. Some of them are into importation because when the, the crude oil allocation was not given to some of them went into import, joined the importation gang. You understand me? Now, you didn't let us do our modular refinery. We, are, we went into importation of petroleum product. Now, you want to also take that away. So, he, he has a lot of fights on his hand. But all of these have been created by the corrupt Nigerian system that we talk about all the time. Yeah, but what, what is amusing me is, I, I'm really amused, you know, and what is amusing me is, yes, we are suffering from it, but what I find very amusing is, I don't know, what was he thinking, actually? What was he thinking? Um, I'm sorry, a call distracted me. What was he thinking was going to happen? At this point because it's like when you're dining with the devil you dine with a long spoon so it shouldn't be a surprise I, I actually don't believe that he's surprised so he must have known that there's a possibility that this would happen but it's the people who I am um, who are expressing the surprise that is happening to him 
that I'm wondering about because, of course, he should have been what? Nigeria have Nigerians have. Uh, I have a problem understanding reality. No, Nigerians <laughs> have historical amnesia. <laughs> Honestly, Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians actually suffer from uh, uh, historical amnesia. The truth about it is that anybody that knows Nigeria very well knows that for Dangote to succeed. He will have a lot of fight in his hands. Both, both, uh, uh, vicious, silent, and subtle. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, silent, subtle, and vicious. He will have a lot of fight in his hand. Whether he will win, the truth about it is that if Buhari was in government, trust me, Dangode was not going to have this problem. Because, hmm, are we sure? <laughs> yeah, you don't know why I say so. See, the man who is in power, matters in Nigeria. Of you course. Know, you know leadership in Nigeria right now is more like in the hands of Tinubu and his southern sons. Yeah. Yes, some of them are, are Dangolish friends. But uh, it's a matter of how many are your friends and how many are your enemies. Do you understand? Anyway. That's what is playing out. Right now, he has more enemies than friends. Of course, of the position that he occupies in this government, he has more enemies than friends. Some of the enemies are very silent, and, and they will be close, and they will be close by parading as friends. Yeah, so I'm not really bothered about uh, Dan Guti. Exactly, uh, he's suffering uh, what many businessmen, many entrepreneurs. Hold on, let me even put it. Let me just put it plainly. This is a monster that he helps to feed. Let, let, let me just put it like that. It's a monster that he helps to feed. And so it's like creating Frankenstein. If Frankenstein turns around to, you know, to capture fight. you and say yes. So because, I mean, all along, all this time, he's had the influence, he's had their ears, and he's had the capability to... And he's had their patronage. Yes, and he's been enjoying it, right? Yeah. So what, what, I, what I'm trying to say is, because, you know, I don't know much about politics, economics, and all that, but just from the psychology of human beings, I, I know that even if he wanted to ch make changes, he would have had a battle on his hands because these people, we have lots of um, blood suckers. So one person is going to have difficulty getting them on board to so let's do things differently, right? So he could have looked at it and said, oh yeah, I have all the influence and all that, but I cannot get these people on board with me because they are after their own pockets. So I am not the god of Nigeria, so I'll just keep on going on my merry way and just doing what what um i can do but i think that a person who genuinely really cares would have not continued to enjoy the monopoly like that but unfortunately that's what we have as human beings sometimes when he favors us once in a while you find that rare person who thinks beyond their own noses but most of the time this is what we're going to have so there is no surprise here and you can actually create the monster that will eat you that will eat you up. For those who know Nigeria very well, you understand. Those who have been around for some time, mm. you understand. We're not talking about. But I think this this could have happened anywhere where you have this, even if it's not Nigeria, where you yeah, have no, a system. That's what I'm to yes, say. Yeah. In Nigeria, see the truth about it. Nigeria is a peculiar case. Mm. Nigeria, some of the things that you never expect will happen. Nigeria is a peculiar place. Some of the things you never expect mm. that would ever happen under the sun. Some most times or sometimes happen in Nigeria. <laughs> in Nigeria, mm. yeah. I'm beginning to think that the world itself is no, Nigeria no. is just a small, a small clear. picture See, representing the whole places, world. Eh, all that, other places, eh, mm. yeah, you get what I'm saying. It cannot in, in, in democratic systems. Oh, okay, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I, yeah. He cannot enjoy the monopoly that he has enjoyed in oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sectors of the Nigerian economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? You can't because you have you have so many lobby groups. You have so many. You understand? But Nigeria is a very peculiar place where some things happen and then you wonder how. And that is exactly what has happened. But the truth about it is, I'm not so bothered about that. But I'm I'm concerned about all of us. Of how it affects us? Mm. Yes, I am, and that's where I come in. Mm. And that's why I say, if you guys have allowed it to be the business up to this level, even with government funds, 
You know, government funds is involved in uh, Dangote uh, refinery. Okay. It's not only its own money. Okay. The, the Nigerian government funds is also involved. In, right. In billions of dollars. Okay. Okay. So you are saying. So you you will not expect this, but that's okay. Turn your device. Rather than the interest of the combination, you do not expect the Melekiari to be antagonizing. And obviously, through their rumor mill, they, they were accusing him of selling or selling the food door that they allocated to him. There's no way he would do that. Me, I can tell you exactly that there's no way. It's all a propaganda. And we all know that this government is a propaganda government. You understand? Yeah. Oh, you can see a lot of people are against it. But for the sake of the country, so that we can, we can, we can you know, uh, get a certain sense of... of uh, do you really believe that? Do you, do, and do you think that that will happen? Well, do you... I always think of what needs to happen. Okay. Whether it will happen is a different question. It is left to so many factors. We can hear you, but the audio is just not loud enough. Okay, so. let me see, sir. Now, forgive. I'm a chemical engineer, first of all. Yeah. Let's talk about the hard hmm? the diesel, having sulfur and not being good enough. I did my industrial attachment in 1994 with research and development department of the DPR of NNPC at Moscow Road in Portacot, Fortnite Moscow Road. Now, we check the viscosity of the crew. We check the sulfur content. Every crew, every diesel, every sample that gets into the industry in Nigeria passes through that lab. We test Every single sample. So I begin to wonder. I don't know, that was 94, which is 30 years ago. So I cannot say for sure if the lab is still up to par. I cannot say for sure if things are still being done, if due diligence is still being done. That being said, I'm coming from the angle of. Oh, government wants to, uh, the NFC wants to backlash him, NFC wants to finish him. Maybe he hasn't worked given the right uh, milk, the right hands. So maybe that's why they want to drop his, his products. Now, giving NFC the benefit of the doubt that their lab and their technicians knew what they were doing. Any engineer, I'm a technical engineer, you know what to do when you're titrating. To make sure that the levels are right when you are, you know, you know, because it's a process. You get the food that you want it to. Get it back. That being said, why should anybody, anybody in this country who has money enough, who is a money bag, why would they be ever interested in investing in this nation anymore? You have what that what they say. That his friend warned him, do not put your money in this industry. Do not put your money in this economy. They will sabotage you. They will frustrate you. Now, why are we, why is our president and the rest of them, why are they going around the whole world encouraging people to come and invest in the country? Encouraging foreign investors when our own is being rubbish. Okay. What, 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 what I have Personally, and I won't lie to you. I had a policy in my home, not in Dangote. I never bought Dangote sugar. I never bought Dangote salt. I never bought Dangote spaghetti. I was not offended. I just felt the man had too much monopoly over those markets. And my husband would tell me, you are a single person fighting a system. You better call, you better give in. That is what is in the market, you better buy it. I say, no, in this house, there will be no Dangote sugar, there will be no Dangote spice, there will be no... But I, I, I realize that, look, there's a monopoly, there's a monopoly. Maybe that's what they're trying to prevent. I was happy when Buhari and the others came, and they, what they call, they launched it sometime last year, not 
normally love me do from Friday to see the good stuff things, you know. I was like, ah, you know, but I mean, so I mean, my father worked in NMB. My father was the executive general manager of the services of the BRPC. We used, we, we, we know when worry refinery was working, for some refinery was working. I did my youth service in LMA Petrochemical. So we know when these petrochemical industries were working. We know when these refineries were working. As far back as 80, 84, 85, we were going to these plants as students in NMC staff school. I was the first head girl of NMC staff school. So I'm telling you that if this government is ready, eh? You see that thing that they've been doing turnover maintenance, turnover maintenance for over how many years? All my life, I've been hearing turnover maintenance. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to happen. All it is. That's all it is. Exactly. On the same corrupt Nigerian system. So the truth about it is, but overall, I'm not concerned about who is fighting who, who is who. I'm I'm concerned about the country because at the end of the day, if if those ones who are fighting in, who are prepared, who are trying to uh, rubbish in, who are trying to destroy the refinery project, if they succeed, yeah, they will still suffer. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it's the people that will suffer. The, 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 they the, don't care. The yeah, they don't care. They don't care. All they mm. want to do is make money. Yeah. And they will, they will still make the money and lord over you and rubbish you and oppress you. Do you understand? So, I am more... I would have said, okay, it's getting um, a measure of what it death others, other people. But we are talking about almost the livelihood of a nation. Yeah. Right now. So that's why I would say to anyone to say they should give him all the support for now. You know, they should give him all the support because for now, even though he might be a businessman, but what he is doing is generational. He is going to deliver Nigeria to a very, very large extent mm. from the pants of all of this importation of food. Uh, is is he really going to be able to do as you hope? Because those people are going to come from behind, even if they give it to him, they will still come from behind to make sure that they are cutting this pie up. Uh, well, you know, you know, you know, business is all about streams. You understand me? If you block a stream, mm. you understand me? Depending on how long you block that stream, it can dry off. Okay, okay. And alternative sources will come up. Let me give you a very good example. Okay, okay. If he wins, if he wins this, this war, because it's, it's a war, if he wins this war, if he's able to win this war, which is very difficult to win because they are ganged up really against him. They've been ganging up. He's been pushing through. But they, they are, because of this government that is not so totally behind him, Yeah. even though government money is inside, because of this government that is not totally behind him, the ganging up has more like been accentuated. Now, if he's able to win this war, the next thing is that smaller modular refineries, it will, that's where the next channel will go. They will try to attack him through smaller modular refineries. Do you know? mm. But even that will be to the benefit of the country. Do you hear what I'm saying? If he wins this, it is good that he wins this war. How is he but going to win it? Up, they won't stop attacking mm. him. Yeah. But the next step of attack will be to, to allocate crew to the already licensed modular refineries. And what I will do is that it will reduce the monopoly and Nigeria will benefit. But they will be too afraid to actually allow this to happen. You know they will be afraid to, to have a change in the status quo. Uh, there, there are can different I, dimensions to the matter. Do you know? Do you know that my uncles and my relatives that were, I mean, people that were drivers, people that were working in the field, in NNPC, in the refineries, years after the refineries stopped working, you know they were being paid? No, they were collecting salary. They are still collecting salary. You know the refinery was every year, every year, 
every month, like long work, these people were being paid. Where was the money coming from? I'm telling you that it serves the purpose of these people that is called Kaba to keep things grounded, to destroy. They want to yeah. bring us to our knees. Okay. It serves their purpose. Thank you so much for your contributions and for enlightening us with your knowledge on this. Okay, so let's end this conversation and talk about right. the plant process. Yeah.